Welcome to Imperfect Momming. Our children are constantly looking to us for examples. The term role model doesn't quite cut it here. We are shaping their worldview with every move we make. You see, it's not in the lectures we give or moments where we are actively attempting to teach them. It's in the micro movements we make, the unconscious ways in which we navigate life. We are constantly teaching our children how to show up for themselves, their friends, their future partners, and even their future children. So what can we do to ensure we are raising thoughtful, compassionate, self-aware human beings? We have to become them ourselves. No one is perfect, but we can still all be better, and it starts with self-healing. Let's get to it. Welcome to Mom Happy Hour, and if you're listening on the podcast, welcome to Imperfect Momming. Um, we go live in my Facebook group for um, uh, Moms Conquering Guilt and uh, every Monday morning at 9 a.m., unless I forget that uh, that's on my calendar and I schedule something else. It happens every once in a while, but anyway, mm-hmm. welcome. Mm-hmm imperfect mommy and exactly life happens right like you drop your kid off at school and he says can you pick me up today and you can but then you also forget oh I was supposed to do this or something that's not the case today I'm actually free to pick him up but (laughs) so you might be wondering who this person is uh sitting in zoom with me this is Aaron Gothen welcome to mom happy hour with me Thank you. And if you've been listening to the podcast for any amount of time, uh, she was my very first guest. So yeah, that was fun. So who are you and what do you do? I'm Erin Goffin. I'm a single mom of three in Toronto, Canada, and I am a neurotransformational results coach and productivity specialist. It's way too much to talk about to say so we're going to shorten it at some point right at some point like chaos calmer or I calm the chaos something like that yeah we our our businesses align uh quite a bit so we wanted to start um you know overlapping where she's in my group I'm in her group and uh we can help more people that way I think um so I'm going to set it up just a little bit about what we were planning on talking about Um, so I have been posting little clips of the podcast and the mom happy hour and the stuff that I'm talking about, um, on Facebook reels and Instagram reels and stories and TikTok and by far getting more engagement on TikTok. Um, but I triggered some people when I talked about the second shift. So just to represence that, that's when a woman goes to work and works for eight hours and then comes home and works some more for free, where men typically go to work and they work their shift and they come home and they're done. So a couple of the comments that I got were uh, personal attacks on me which I thought was hysterical because they were attacking things that I didn't say. So one of them said I should have made better choices and my imagine feeling like my family is a burden. And I don't remember the other one, but like, I didn't say anything about my family being a burden. All I said in the concept of the second shift is that women have a second shift and i'm going to preface this by saying not all women and not all men this is a generalization the only reason i even have any awareness around this is that this is what i saw growing up otherwise i would have read that and been like what my dad did everything or my stepdad helped my mom all the time you know like there would have been an argument in my brain, right? Yeah. So which topic did we decide, which rabbit hole did we decide to go down, (laughs) Erin? Was it the communication rabbit hole? 
Because when we were talking about it, I was just sitting there going, oh my goodness, you can't even make a comment without somebody attacking. And I'd like to know if they were men or women who made those comments. Um, From what I could tell, one of them for sure was a man. I'll look for the other one while you say some stuff. It's... <laughs> From what I remember, my mom was a single mom. And from what I remember, I was married for 24 years and it was that way. It was me taking care of the kids all day and I stayed home. So that was a choice we both made because he traveled all the time. And it was a choice we made. I'd stayed home with the kids and then I took care of the house and everything else. And then he'd come home and he wouldn't do anything. And his version of it was, well, he makes the money. So he didn't have to do anything else. Now, saying that, when he didn't like the way I might have cleaned something, I just made him do it himself. So he started on Saturdays to start cleaning the house. But I don't think he ever put the kids to bed or did the bath time or did any of that. But I know the comments for that would be, well, you stayed at home and that was your choice. So it's 24-hour job. So I see it from a different point of view than somebody who would work full-time and then come home and have to do all of the stuff. Yeah, it's not it's not easy. Like even in your situation, dad, I'm not going to specifically call out your ex-husband. Dad's role in life in in a child's life is more significant than paying the bills. There is an emotional connection that children need from their dads. Yeah. And I can speak from my experience that my dad went to work and came home and worked some more by choice because he he had hours at like my dad was a pastor. He would go to work and work and then he'd come home and he would work some more. And there were hours, like at first when he started at this new church, um, he had a lot of autonomy. And then a new pastor came in and was like, nipped the autonomy in the bud. And so he was always at the, at the office, but he would come home and do more work. And I catch myself doing the same thing where I, I mean, I work from home, but I'll work all day and then Xander comes home and then I keep working. And so I've set a really firm boundary that when he gets home at four o'clock, I'm done working with the exception of one day a week, which is meetings that are out of my scheduling. If I had the choice of when they were scheduled, they would be scheduled before four o'clock. Um, and so there are days that I choose not to go to the meeting because I'd rather spend the time with the family. Um, I feel like I went on a tangent, but, um, but I don't think that men have that personal boundary either. Like I would go on vacations and that phone would come with us. (laughs) It was just, okay, I'm throwing that in the lake, but, um, yeah, my dad would, my dad was, um, was very intellectual and he just loved reading, just loved reading philosophical books and, and, I mean, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was his favorite Mm -hmm. author and um, he would go, he went to Disneyland. I didn't, I never went to Disneyland with my dad that I'm aware of, but I heard the story of going, he went to Disneyland and brought Dietrich Bonhoeffer with him and sat down and read while everybody else was having fun. And you know, there's something to be said for that's not his kind of fun or whatever. Like he's not sitting at baseball games reading Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Like, (laughs) so there's something to be said for that, but you know, there's an emotional connection that kids need with their fathers and bath time is a great routine. And I think that bath time would be better for the kids than dad picking up the kitchen. Yeah. Or the laundry, right? Absolutely. Um, so yes, I looked at the comments and uh the the username on one of them is not obviously a man, but the picture is obviously a man. Um, then there's Kevin who said I was complaining about my family. 
Um, and, oh, I guess the, the guy that was just the picture is just laughing. <laughs> no actual comment, just laughing. Um, and then a uh, Mike commented and he's the one that said I should have made better choices. And then a user, something, 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 something like a bunch of numbers, um, uh, actually said, it depends. Does your husband have a physical demanding job or a desk job? And how about you? And by the way, you don't work for free. It's called having a family. That's an interesting topic too. And I understand that one for sure, because yes, you have your family, but at some point you hope that you get to leave the house. Like you get to get a break, you get to get away. My mom would say that my dad could read a whole magazine and the kids wouldn't bother him at all. And there was once my ex was in the kitchen and I was in the shower. My kid came up to the shower to ask me for some milk. And it's, we don't get the break. I even find on the weekends because that's when we're catching up on all the stuff, the laundry the, and then the kids stuff that's on top of that. And it's like, don't get a break. So when I actually split up with my ex, I'm like, now what do I do with myself? Because I get the kids every other week. It's like, and I try to spend, but they're older now too. So it's like even trying to spend time with them, it, it's hard, but you don't get a break. Like I say that I was in that house for 20 years, raising children. And I don't remember doing anything for myself or anything else, like no breaks. Like my mom would also say that she would put her butt down on the couch and that's when the kids would come, they'd hear it and they'd come and they'd keep asking her for stuff and doing stuff because it was mom. Yeah. And it's hard and it's, they're not a burden and it's not having a family, but when you have a partner to help you with these things. I think that's what the big thing is. You need the partner who will say, okay, you know what? You go, take a few hours, go do something. Just get out of the house, right? And and Larry and I were actually talking about the man saying, you go and I'll take care of the kids. And he's like, why do we have to tell you? Why don't you ask? And I said, you know, that's a really good question. I always asked because in our relationship, he's not dad. He's, he's stepdad. He would, and you know, bonus dad, he's bonus dad. You know, he's, um, he didn't always want kids that, that wasn't always part of our relationship. We had a more you know, shallow relationship in the beginning. And so when it turned into, you know, a deeper relationship, I was very aware of the fact that he never wanted kids. So I didn't want to just assume that he should take care of, that he would take care of Xander if I needed to go somewhere. Yeah. And you know, so I always asked, I was like, Hey, I have X, Y, Z to do, or I'm going to go do this, or I've been invited to do this. Can you watch Xander? Is that, you know, is that a problem? You know, is there, should I find somebody else? Like I'm asking you first. Um, and after a while I would, I didn't have to ask anymore. I could say, Hey, so-and-so invited me. I'm going to go. Will you, you know, Xander will be home you know, I probably still ask, like, I'm, I don't, I don't pay attention that much. I don't have to ask at this point. I can just assume like, I'm going to go and, and you're going to watch Xander. And the reason, most of the reason I ask now is because Lord only knows when the man is off work. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Is, are you going to be off work? <laughs> yes. And my ex would have so much else going on, like a couple of days of um, jujitsu and then out with his friends or out with work friends or work dinners. And it's OK, well, I want Monday nights off to go and do something. So that became a big thing. And then all of a, I had it for a bit. And then all of a sudden, oh, nope, jujitsu is going to I'm like, OK, then I guess I lose my Monday nights kind of thing. But it's a whole different relationship because it was a whole different industry that he was in. So, yeah. So what I think that, you know, I'm going to make a general sweeping declaration. It's <laughs> not true for everybody. 
but I'm going to make this declaration that I think the problem is communication and expectations. Do you know anything about those two topics? Not at all. Expectations are the bane of my existence and I don't do it anymore. I yeah. don't live by them for other people. I don't let them have any on me. I hate that word. Yeah, I really do. Because it it's is like expected that when I left my job to take care of the kids, I was, that was my job 24 seven. And I think one of the only things I heard Dr. Phil say a long time ago that I actually agreed with was three children are two full-time jobs. I only have one, so I can nod in theory. Um, you can, that's a full, still a full-time job for everything you have to do because you still have to try to keep them alive. Like you still have to feed them every day, supposedly. <laughs> Um, you have to drive them to wherever they want their doctor's appointments. And I had two critically ill kids or chronically ill kids. Um, one who was constantly in therapy and I was doing therapy with him or for him. And we were always somewhere. And my daughter was always blood tests and all kinds of other stuff for her illness. So it's like, that was a lot all on its own. And to do it all alone was tough. Without the emotional support. And yeah. at the very minimum. Yeah. 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 The the expectations are dangerous things. And um and you know, I think the first step is realizing where you have expectations. Like, are you expecting your significant other to give you a break, to tell you go do something fun. Cause that was part of the conversation uh, yesterday was that, you know, we've, there are moms out there who dad will say, Hey, I'll take the kid, go do something. And in our mind, we can't fathom. We have no idea what we want to do because we've lost that part of us. We've lost that part of our identity is somebody that does things without our children. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a huge issue. If husband is offering to take the kids and then you don't do anything or you refuse it, he might not offer again. Yeah. And so then if you're not asking because you're waiting for the offer, then we have issues. And that's why it's a expectation and <laughs> communication um, thing. Yeah. And then as the kids get older, it's a whole identity shift then too. Because you're like, oh, I have time to do stuff. Let's take up a hobby or let's go do this. Or you start doing different kinds of things. Yeah. 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 It's, you know, momming is hard. Now I do, I have met a man who was basically Mr. Mom. Now my, my uncle was too. He stayed home with his daughter while she was growing up. And then she got mad at him when he got a job. And, um, but a friend of mine, his wife would go on trips three or four times a year for a week with all her girlfriends. Cause they were all single and he took care of the kids. Like that was his thing. And he was Mr. Mom. And I'm like, oh, so if she is like, she's single. And that sort of hit me that, oh, these men, not all, not all. They are act like they're still single, but they get everything. So they've got the cake and eat it too. But that's a whole other discussion. And I can get into that one really deep. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a little homework assignment. If this is something that's resonating with you in your, in your family. Um, you know, take, take some time to figure out what it is that you need and then ask someone, because not everybody has a husband or a partner that they're working with, ask someone to help you facilitate getting your needs. So if that means babysitting for you, then ask yes. someone to babysit. Um, you know, or if that means time. change time. time. Yeah. 
the the kid swap it's a bonus for everybody like the kid gets to experience another household like it's a good thing for us to experience other people other parenting styles like that that's all good um and i know that there's a lot of trust issues when it comes to that and i understand the trust issues and find somebody that you trust because more than likely they're not going to screw up your kid in two and a half hours three hours like you know that it, it's it's pretty unlikely and um you know once upon a time i think in the 80s and 70s and 80s and kids just went and played with the kids on the block and i'm one of those kids i survived <laughs> so did okay. I. yeah yeah um any final and i, final and I found when kids came to my house i got a lot done too because the kids were occupied yeah so i had no problem having the kids in my house i would just have food out for them they can grab but I could do laundry and fold the laundry. And there's a lot of stuff you could do when the kids are at your place. Yeah. And my new favorite trick is everybody clean up before you leave. Because that's the thing that makes Xander's room a mess. Because we'll clean it. And then he doesn't ever hang out in his room or hardly ever bring any of the toys out of his room. And so the only time he really plays with his toys is when people come over to play with him and uh then they just leave a mess and they leave and then I'm stepping over toys for the next six months because that's how often <laughs> we try to clean it up um and uh yeah so yesterday for Mother's Day uh we were at my mom's house and they were playing the kids all the kids were playing with trains and um and right be and before they left, I knew that Xander didn't want to clean up the trains by himself. And he wasn't the only one who was playing. He's the one that instigated it, but he wasn't the only one playing with them. And so um, I, I said, okay, everybody clean up, <laughs> do your part. Cause I didn't want to do it. This is Mother's Day, I don't want to help. <laughs> anyway, any final thoughts? Um, no, cause that can be so many tangent yeah. for this one I'd like to see what the comments are from yeah, for sure. the people listening to see yeah Love it. well there will be another episode of imperfect mommy podcast um coming out on Thursday we'll be back um we I say we it'll probably be me but maybe Aaron will be here too you never know um next week for mom happy hour at 9 a.m uh pacific time and until we meet again keep healing Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in to Imperfect Mommy. It's time for us to step up and realize that our power is not in trying to shape our children. Our power lies in shaping ourselves into the people we want our children to model themselves after. Don't just do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. When you become a more self-aware, compassionate, and confident person, you and everyone around you benefit. For more information about me and my work, visit alishalyons.com. That's A-L-Y-S-I-A-L-Y-O-N-S.com. See you next time.